In this video, I'll be taking a look at the historical accuracies of the Woman King and the real aspects that the film gets of the Dahomey Kingdom and answering the question, was the Woman King as controversial as people say it was? So if you enjoyed the Woman King, if you like the fact that it questions slavery from a different angle and you want to begin to learn more about the Dahomey Kingdom, then this is the video for you. We'll be looking at what the film got right with its historical accuracies, what the film got wrong in its historical inaccuracies and then coming to the conclusion of if any of that actually matters at all. So let's start with what the film got right with its historical accuracies. Right off the bat one thing that the film got right is that the Dahomey Kingdom did play a massive role in the transatlantic slave trade. In fact in terms of African kingdoms it was one of the biggest selling slaves to European slavers. And through this selling of slaves it built its wealth and it built its prosperity. Something that we can see in the woman king. The kingdom of Dahomey is massive Massive, the fact that it has an inner wall and an outer wall, the fact that it's got a sectioned off piece of the palace, we can see the wealth and the prosperity of the Dahomey Kingdom and that did come from the trading of slaves. Another thing that the film gets very right is that a section of its army was an all-female regiment. These Agoji warriors, the Mina, they were called in real life. And another nice detail that the film did get in there is that when the Dahomey army captured people from other tribes, the women in particular, they either enlisted into the army as well under the this Mina under the Agoji, or they were sold off as slaves to European slavers. It was also true that kingdoms like the Dahomey Kingdom then did try to move into legitimate trade, such as the trading of palm oil that we see in the film. And one other little thing that I noticed the film did get right is that the Dahomey Kingdom were at war with the Oyo Kingdom. Uh, this was a massive sort of central conflict within the Woman King, and this was true to real life. Of course, that's a great look at everything that the film did get right. Now let's have a look at what the film got wrong and the historical inaccuracies that were in display here. So one thing we see in the film is that King Gezo, played by John Boyega, had a lot of pressure from inside his own council about abolishing the slave trade, whereas in reality it was more pressure from the British than from his own kingdom where that was coming from. Now all that to say, I haven't found anywhere that says otherwise in terms of the pressure from within his own kingdom, but in the film it certainly seems that once he is questioned from within his own kingdom, that's when he begins to say, yeah sure we'll, we'll abolish slavery, where in fact there was definitely more pressure from the British to abolish slavery within the Dahomey Kingdom than there was from inside, at least from everything I have read and watched. Even though there was pressure from the British, in the film we see that King Gezo was beginning to bend on the idea of slavery and beginning to take to the legitimate trade, whereas in reality it was the one thing King Gezo didn't want to drop when the British came a knocking. And the reasons that King Gezo didn't want to drop slavery was not just because it brought wealth and prosperity to the Dahomey Kingdom, but also because he believed it brought his people power, and not just power over other people and other tribes, but inner power, the power to, to do better in your in yourself. Uh, now one slight thing that I think is maybe debatable but I think it was definitely kind of really apparent in here is that it definitely came across that the Agoji, the female warriors, were the main component of the Dahomey army whereas in reality they were one regiment within a larger army. But certainly with everything that I read and everything that I watched it was clear that the European accounts of the Agoji, of the Mina female warriors, were higher than any accounts of the rest of the army and I, it's not surprising really because it was they were female warriors right in a, in an army and that was something that European armies probably weren't doing at that time so they were obviously quite taken by the female warriors and the Mina and the Agoji so it makes sense that there's a lot more written about them than necessarily other parts of the army and then of course it also makes sense that the film focuses on them and I mean, you know, it's a film, you can choose to focus in where you want to focus. So even just that makes sense why it would focus on the female warriors, because that's the choice being made by the people making the film. Okay, so we've had a look at the historical accuracies of the film, we've had a look at the historical inaccuracies of the film. But why does any of it matter? Why am I making this video? Why are people getting angry about the inaccuracies? It's weird, right? Because it's a film, there's creative license, you can kind of angle it how you want to, right? And I think also that we're looking at looking at this period of time in a retrospective, through a retrospective lens, we can question what was happening and we can fill in the gaps a little bit more, depending on how we view it, right? And that's creative license, that's creative liberty, that's, you know, if you wanted to make it yourself and take a look at a different angle, then, you know, you could 
do that, I suppose, or work your way up to being able to do that, right? But, you know, like any historical film in Hollywood, there are going to be inaccuracies, and there's an absolute long list of films that follow this kind of path, right? The likes of Gladiator, 300, The Last Samurai, Mary Antoinette, Braveheart, Pearl Harbor. It's kind of endless, right? Historical inaccuracies are rife throughout Hollywood, and everybody knows this. So why does it matter so much for The Woman King? Why is this now the big talking point well I mean obviously because it's new so we want to talk about it it gets us engagement here on YouTube but I think also because it is touching on such a subject as slavery right this is you know it's at that period of time when slavery the transatlantic slave trade one of the biggest movement people as slaves in western history it's it's arrowing in on there right and we're looking at not just that period of time, but we're looking at an African kingdom that was trading in its own people or, you know, people from its own continent. And a lot of people are still very attached to that and it means a lot to a lot of people still. And what kind of comes of that territory when we're looking at an African kingdom that traded in slaves? Everyone that argues that point, that likes to, go, that likes to point that out, they kind of never question why. Why would African people trade in African people? As I've already said, what we learn in the film and we learn from reading about the Dahomey kingdom is that it brought them wealth and prosperity. When I come back to that idea of a retrospective lens what we get to do when we look back at points of history is we get to question it through that medium through the film why else might they have done that and it comes up as a question in the film that maybe they did it as protection from the European slavers who were deemed as more powerful more aggressive and were really you know especially the British and the Portuguese really leading the transatlantic slave trade if they are selling people from other tribes then it means none of their people are going off to be slaves and are dying and are never seen again and going to the new world the stronger parts of the film for me were the parts when it was discussing slavery and discussing the Dahomey Kingdom's place within slavery. And for me, I really wanted them to delve into those conversations more and ask those questions more because I'm going to keep going back to it really, but that is the creative license we get there when we're looking at history through this retrospective lens. And so you kind of have to ask yourself, is it important for filmmakers to be 100% accurate all the time or is it important for them to, to tell a story and to question what came before? I mean, surely that is the objective of film, right, is to question human nature, to question why we do things and, and what reasons there are for it. And I think that The Woman King does that very, very successfully. I just wish that it had done it more. And so what I kind of ask then is that when we have a film that is black made and black led and we don't get many of them to the extent of the woman king we can get mad and we can get angry you know there were people talking about boycotting the film and i just that's when i kind of find it that it gets a bit out of hand when you have films like gladiator for example which wins five oscars and gets nominated for seven more why are we not supporting the box office for the woman king getting that up and and in there and showing hollywood that we want black made black led films like this but then we can come to the creators and say look okay we're not quite sure that you handled this exactly how we wanted to here's how we can maybe do it better the next time and then we get a better film but we still get the original black stories because i know there are a lot of people that view this channel and don't like race swapping well if we don't support the original black made films then we're going to just get continual race swapping all the time because that is hollywood's answer to diversity and representation when black original films don't do well at the box office. And if we don't like the historical accuracies within The Woman King, that's fine. Find a way to criticise it that can progress rather than just tear it down. I think it's a really important point there. And if you really want to know what was historically accurate and what wasn't, do your research. Go on to Google. I did so much research for this video just to even talk about it on a very basic level. I've not gone into any depth, but I've got a basic understanding that actually has brought more context to the film and helped me appreciate the film a lot more. There's a book above my shoulder right here, David Olusogu's Black and British Have Forgotten History. There's a nice 10 page section in there on the Dahomey Kingdom. There was a great YouTube channel I watched, Home Team. I'll link them downstairs in the description box. I say downstairs like you got to climb somewhere. But check out their videos on the Dahomey Kingdom. Really insightful stuff. Honestly, it will bring you more context to the film and hopefully, like me, you will enjoy that, that, that context and you'll have a greater appreciation for it. That's my thoughts on The Woman King's historical accuracies and why I don't think it was as controversial as people say it was. But let me know your thoughts. Have you seen The Woman King? Let me know in the comments section down below. I look forward to seeing what people have to say. Please keep it respectful. As soon as it gets disrespectful, your comments are gone.
Simple as that, really. I want to have discussion, not argument. Did you enjoy this video? Please drop it with a like. Make sure you subscribe, turning on that bell notification. This video is part of my Black History Month content. There's not a lot of it. Life happens. You want to make more content, but you can't. But there will be more. In fact, there's going to be a video right there that is about Black History Month. And if it's not there yet, it's because it's yet to be uploaded, but it will be there. If not, enjoy that. That's a great video. Until next time, Hakuna Machata.